G'day gorgeous and welcome to the podcast that's dedicated to turning entrepreneurial women into a millionaires from the inside out, enriching lives for generations to come. This week's podcast, how to become indispensable in times of economic turmoil for entrepreneurs, contractors and employees. And today I am going to delve into practical yet extremely powerful ideas and solutions no matter who you are or what position you hold within a company. However, be warned, I do not hold back today and you will absolutely need your journal and a nice hot cup of tea. The G'day Gorgeous podcast is where you'll get raw, real and relatable stories and guidance and proven formulas that can help you overcome your frustrations and live a life you truly love and deserve each and every day. I'm Amanda Jane Clarkson. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, entrepreneur, and millionaires mentor. And if you too love the idea of becoming a millionaires, pop over and visit us at g'daygorgeous.com or click the link below in the notes right now. And of course, as I said, you will absolutely need your journal today because I'm jumping into strategy and tactic and you will see that you can become indispensable no matter what is happening in the marketplace. Let's dive into today's podcast. Welcome to today's podcast. Today is going to be a um, very empowering podcast I absolutely hope you have your journal. You are going to need them. This is a moment in time, in history, um, for all of us that we are going to truly be tested because none of us have been through a time like this. Um, And, you know, some people say the world has gone mad. It is in chaos out there. However, you know, today I want to give you some ideas on how to become indispensable in times like this, in times of turmoil, in times of uncertainty. It does not matter if you're an entrepreneur, you're a contractor or an employee. If you are brand new to this podcast, then welcome. If you're thinking about starting a business, don't be freaked out and frightened away. I'm going to share with you some day, uh, today some really intelligent insights because the last thing you want to do is lose control of your self-governance, which means that you will lose control in all areas of your life. It is fabulous to see you, so many entrepreneurs here, entrepreneurs, um, and some maybe even employees here, because this absolutely is going to affect, affect each and every one of us. You will absolutely need your journal today. Again, I'm going to give you some how to, what to do's. Um, And so I want you to really listen carefully. And as I'm going through my ideas, all based on my own journey, being in the trenches, 14 different businesses, 33 jobs. So I've been on both sides of the fence as an employee. I've been a contractor and an entrepreneur for most of my life. So the information I'm going to share with you today is based on raw, real and relatable ideas and situations and circumstances that I've actually lived through and come out the other end. I think the last time that I lived in a time of turmoil, uncertainty, chaos was the global uh, global financial crisis back in 2008. Some of you have heard my story. We woke up a million dollars in net worth down. Um, We had lost that in the GFC and I understand at a very deep level, on a personal level, what it feels like to go through that time and space, to find the courage to try and keep going in a business, come out the other end and keep going on my journey. And this is what I want to share with you all today. And as I said, it doesn't matter which space you sit in on that triangle this information is imperative for you because so many people through panic um, through non-self-governance are going to lose their job they're going to lose their business they are going to lose a lot more than that though they are going to lose out in all seven areas of life and so what I'm going to do today on this podcast I think it's really important it may go for an extra 10 15 minutes longer than normal but this is imperative um, that we think differently than the herd than the masses who are just 
you know, fighting over the scraps, fighting for their limitation. This is not who we are. I want to give you some, you know, deeper thought than that, deeper thought process on how to move through it and make yourself indispensable. And so, um, first of all, I'm going to break it down into two components. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is, um, well, first of all, we have two choices. The two choices that we have as a group, a collective group, is that we can um, react and lose control of ourselves, which means we lose control of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. But what happens from that is not only do we join the mass market in the panic phase, what happens is we become less valuable in the marketplace. Now, I want you to write that down and really think about that. As I said, if you're just listening to this, if you're new to this podcast, put yourself in the position in the position that I'm sharing with you from the three different angles of the triangle, okay? So you will become less valuable in the marketplace. Can you afford to become less valuable? The answer is certainly not. The other choice that we all have as human beings is to reflect, okay, not react, but reflect and ask questions. How can I turn challenge into opportunity? How can I become indispensable and more valuable in the marketplace so my business doesn't shut down, I don't lose my contract, and certainly I cannot afford to lose my job? And so there's a different way of thinking in this. And this is why I've broken it down for entrepreneurs, contractors and employees second. So I still want you to listen up. It doesn't matter where you sit. This, every little thing that I'm going to share with you today, even if you are um, on the employee or the contractor side of the triangle, this is for you as well. But I'm talking to the business owners specifically now, because here's what I'm going to say to all of you. This is not a time to retract. This is a time to be a stand up, step out leader. Now, I know you are hearing this everywhere. Everyone out there is saying the same message. All world leaders are giving you the same message. The difference today on this podcast is that I'm going to give you some ideas on the what to do and the how to do it. Everyone's just saying, you know, now's not the time to panic. Now's the time to stay at home, do this, that and the other. But, you know, I'm talking from a business point of view here on how you can turn this challenge into more opportunity. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper. Because I believe as a world leader myself in the space of being an entrepreneur and showing other women how to become a millionaires from the inside out in all seven areas of life is that we have a responsibility not to throw in the towel in times like this. We have a responsibility to ask questions. So the first question that I would ask myself, and I'm going to ask you to write this down, is the different areas of life, the seven areas of life that we live in. I'm going to quickly run through them. Love, health, relationships, your vocation, your money situation, your personal growth, and your overall happiness and well-being. On a scale of one to 10, for each of these seven areas, where do you sit? Because the truth is this, the more empowered you become in all the seven areas, the less likely the desire to throw in the towel is going to be. Now, I look at people all around me and people are mostly throwing their hands in the air going, it's not my responsibility. It's it's the government's fault. It's their fault. It's this, that and the other. And they're just sitting there like baby birds with their beak going like this, nonstop waiting to be fed a worm. You know, as standout leaders, millionaires leaders, we've got to do the thinking for ourselves. And if you're disempowered, Powered in any of those seven areas of life, this is where these times that we cannot foresee will have the most impact on you. And this is why the truth is about business, whether you are an employer or a contractor, it does not matter. It is a reflection of you. How you're showing up in your business in any of those three triangles is a reflection of you. Because success, as I say, is an inside job. 80% is invisible, 20% is tactic and strategy, but it needs to come together to become, you know, to, to enjoy a successful life in all areas. All that needs to come together. The invisible must come together with the 
visible but this is all about really focusing right now a lot on the invisible and today I'm going to give you some stuff that tactics and strategy so you must train your mind to innovate not retract and it's why I say your health right now your relationships your money status your personal growth and your self-worth or self-love is so vital to be focusing on right now and not looking out there, not watching the news every five minutes, not getting sucked into the constant frigging conversations that just talk about the one or two things. Like I can't even stomach it anymore because what it does is it pulls you down and it puts you in this a different state not a leadership state but a follower state we can't afford to be in that state especially if you have a business right now you cannot afford to be pulled into that and so this is a perfect time where a lot of us are working from home um, not being around crowds where this is your time to step up grow up and learn to innovate now that might come across you know a little bit harsh and people go oh you're very strong there Amanda I am because I believe it's a big responsibility you know business is not an easy roller coaster business has enough challenges however if we get sucked into that vortex of um, victim mentality we are stuffed as leaders and so I just choose not to buy into it sometimes I can't escape it I'm aware of what's going on but you know these past few weeks this past month I've been asking myself some questions too how can I pivot how can I change how can I innovate turn lemons to lemonade you know I'm right in the middle of creating a brand new course for millionaires around financial independence you know business blueprint and the millionaires mindset you know timing couldn't be could it be any better could it be any worse these are the questions we've got to ask ourselves and the stronger you are uh, or the more empowered you are in all of those seven areas of life will determine your destiny it will determine whether you go broke mentally emotionally spiritually financially all the rest of it physically some people will get physically not only sick from the a virus or whatever but they will break down in so many other ways because of stress that is what's going to happen and so I'm going to give you some questions right now ladies as an entrepreneur and guys if you're watching this or listening to this for the first time put yourself in the position to ask yourself these questions that I'm going to give you that I ask myself every single day while I'm sitting at home in my studio thinking about how I'm going to fit, uh, pivot thinking about how I'm going to turn these challenges into a massive opportunity get your journal out and the first question I would ask myself is my vision and my mission important enough that I can grow and become magnetic in the marketplace instead of being stuck in the herd now this is a really important question so you've got to now revisit if you're in business what are you doing it for what is your vision what is your mission how can you become so attached to that idea through serving others and helping others get what they want that you become a magnet a beacon of light that is the outcome that is what we are thinking about here instead of being in the dark and stressing and worrying like everybody else the next question I ask myself so what would be the opportunities that can come from this challenge that I'm facing so I want you to think about now your business your industry now put yourself out there and look at all the people you know in your exact industry and ask yourself of these people who is retracting and who is shining so you may have somebody in your industry that you perceive as opposition or, or somebody who's got a great share of the marketplace that you're in now have a look at what they're doing what are they doing are they shining their torch are they shining brightly and moving into the market more becoming more magnetic or are they retracting if they're retracting how can you take advantage of this and turn that into an opportunity think about your market right now then ask this question how can I use my imagination and come up with brand new ways to help others get what I, they want to help others get what they want so that my business grows 
instead of retracting. So you've got to think differently. And uh, I was watching briefly last night, I happened to see a story on a current affair. I can't stand watching that show, but I just need to keep up with the news because it helps me write great podcasts. (laughs) And they're talking about so many food businesses. I'm just going to use this as an example. Now I've had a food business, right? So I understand it has its highs and its lows. And this guy was letting go of staff and his cafe had no one in it. But the whole story was around, oh, you know, poor old me, I'm a victim and I think I might have to close and I can't pay my bills. And then they showed how this guy was letting, being let go and he didn't have a job and he couldn't pay his bills. You know, the whole thing was doom and gloom. But what about thinking about well, okay, so people are not coming into my business, my cafe, or you might have a beauty business, or you might have a pizza joint, or I don't know what you've got, whatever your business is, people aren't coming to you, right? Bakery, you name it. Well, what if you went to the other people? What if you went to them? You might have to close your doors for a few hours a day and say, okay, how can I, as a stand-up business leader, go knocking on doors and you've got all your commerce around you, like all of the office blocks and things like that, where people are still going to work and go, how do I take my services to them instead of sitting there like a victim waiting for people to come to you. Again, you might think that I'm harsh and I might get some flack for this, but it is the truth. I have had a business um, in food before. I had a a mobile food van business and I got 100% of my business by going to doors and knocking on them and asking how I could be of service to you. Now, every time I lost a contract and I did lose a few contracts, I would simply get on my courage pants and I would go door knocking and I'd ask myself the question, how can I serve somebody else? How can I take my business to the world instead of sitting here wallowing in my freaking problems? Okay. Now I'm not suggesting everyone's doing that and this is not to attack anybody in their business I know these are stressful times but I look at the employee situation and I look at the entrepreneur who owned this particular food business if that have actually sat together and this is another thing I would say to every entrepreneur pull your team together take some time out and sit there and brainstorm and ask yourselves how can we serve more people how can we turn this challenge into an opportunity instead of going your separate ways where the entrepreneur you know says well I think I might go broke now and then the employee walks out with his tail between his legs going, well, now I can't pay the bills. What if they'd have come together into a mastermind where you get two minds that create a third mind if you if you um, know the mastermind solution there? And there are so many ideas. So the employee could have stayed in the business taking care of business, why the entrepreneur got dressed appropriately, did up some amazing flyers, went door knocking and suggested that he could serve other people. There are so many opportunities. That's just one tiny opportunity that I'm talking about. There are dozens and dozens. See how it is different thinking. That is standout leadership thinking, not herd mentality where you retract and just throw your arms in the air. That is not the solution. The next question I would ask myself right now is, well, what marketing strategies worked in the past that I can implement now? Now, many, many businesses, and I know hundreds and hundreds of businesses through years of being in business and as a speaker, in the beginning, they were so into their vision, so into their mission. But as time goes by, some of us just lose sight of why we started the business in the first place. We get complacent. Should I even say sometimes we get lazy? And I'm talking to myself here as well because I've been in this space and I want you to put yourself in this space. Ask yourself, is that me? Have I been complacent? Have I gotten lazy? Have I just sort of turned up and gone through the motions But when you first launched your business, think about how excited you were, how enthusiastic you were to take your service to the world. What were some of the marketing strategies you did back then that you can do now? Update and implement and start reaching out to people instead of pulling back and retracting. So you can do that. I've done that. I'm doing that right now. How can you do that? Then the next question I would ask myself is right now with the way things are, I've got my journal, 
what are my, I've got my diary I should say here, seven priority actions that I am focusing on now. Things change, okay? And so, so must your priorities change. What are you doing on a daily basis focusing on your outcome, not what's going on out there. You can become aware of what's going on out there, but what are you focusing on? The thing is this, you must not let your mind go idle and your and certainly not let your mind go weak. This is about keeping your mind empowered and keeping your priorities in check. So if you have a business, your priorities might change and you might say, well, I'm losing money, Amanda. I'm worried nobody's coming into my business. Well, therefore, your priorities change, don't they? You must now find ways to reach out and get the business coming in instead of just sitting there waiting for the business to come to you because it might not. People are in fear, but it doesn't mean you have to be in fear. So check your priorities and make sure they are in priority of order. And I always say in business, if there's no money, there's no business. And and some people go, oh, you know, I can't believe you're thinking about business and making sales in a time like this. Guys, this is enterprise. This is business soulful selling you know fair exchange of value taking your uh your services to the world and helping uplift somebody else's life that is business that is making sales you need to be thinking about this innovating coming up with new ideas yes now is the time to be thinking about sales and how you are going to attract them by becoming magnetic Okay, not repelling. There's nothing worse than going into a business and everything's friggin' doom and gloom. The owner of the company's gloomy, the staff are moping around, the business is empty. It is up to us to change that. It is up to us to go, well, wow, how can I change this? Do I actually need this size office? What if my staff are working home? And that's what we've done. We had a massive office. At one stage, I think I had 17 people in an office. And one day I asked myself, why do I need all this? I think the rent alone was $120,000 a year. Yeah, I've been in business for a long time. I know the strains and the stresses, the financial burdens, the staffing issues. And I said to myself, wow, could we still go on and be profitable if we shut all this infrastructure down and everybody got to work from home in a different environment? Is it possible? Ask yourself, how can you change and evolve your thinking? Is your thinking antiquated based on what was always happening in the past? Great questions. Give me a sign, ladies, if you're into this, you're loving this information. These questions are helping you think about your life, your priorities, and where you are in the marketplace right now. Because I've got a few more that I want to share with you. I said this podcast was going to go for an extra 10, 15 minutes because I think it is vitally important to ask more intelligent questions than get stuck in the herd mentality of what's happening right now. The next question I would ask myself is, how can I reach out to my previous customers or my current customers and soothe their fear, soothe their fear and help them in some way without expecting instant rewards? Most people won't won't give unless they get instant gratification. That's just the truth. But as a standout millionaireist leader, we don't think like that. So who has been your uh, previous customer? Where have they gone? Why aren't they with you anymore? But how can you soothe their nerves? How can you soothe their worries and their concerns right now? Knowing that you may not get instant gratification in the form of money, but future, you know, that law of reciprocity where people, when you give something, people always feel that they need to give back. Are you thinking about that? You know, I meet so many business people, so many employees, so many contracts on my journey, and all they're thinking about is how can they get instant gratification? They won't give an inch. They don't give an inch in the way of over and above service, over and above commitment, over and above care, unless they're paid to the cent. You know, that is such antiquated thinking. It doesn't work like that now in the new world. That was the old world. But, you know, these are the first people who do become 
uh, dispensable. And these are the types of people, this is the type of thinking that if you are that person where you feel you have to get paid every dollar, every cent for every moment that you put in, you will be the first to go. And uh, I say it strongly and I say it with conviction and I say it with certainty because I've been on both sides of the fence. You've got to learn to give more and understand that um, you become rewarded and the rewards come in all shapes and forms, not just necessarily dollars and cents and coins in the bank. There is so much more than that out there. There is so many ways to fulfill the soul and fulfill the heart and through serving others and not expecting the dollar in the purse instantly. That comes later. But you've got to ask yourself, who am I and how do I think? Okay, this is why I'm going through these questions. The next thing I would ask is, where are the voids in your marketplace right now not being filled because of the panic and the turmoil? And how can you move into that space? So look at the space you're in, look at who's retracting, who's shining, what are the voids that are happening in your marketplace right now and go, wow, I can innovate, I can step in and fill that void right now. Another question as an entrepreneur is how can you delegate, delete and automate processes? Exactly what I just said to you a moment ago when we had an office of 17 people, the rent was $120,000 a year. I thought to myself, is this old fashioned thinking? Can I delete this thinking? Can I delete these pro problems around me? Yes, I can. And in the doing of that, save so much money that I can invest back into nurturing my business, nurturing my customers, nurturing my staff, learning to grow and becoming more empowered. This is the time to be thinking about this, not getting online, watching and following the news. I've got so many comments coming in. On fire, girl, I'm going off, aren't I? It's kind of like a podcast slash rampage today. This podcast is full of entrepreneurs today, but it doesn't matter. As I said, if you're an employee, contractor, we are all in the same boat and you're on the firing line unless you take some of this on board and start to think and change. Okay, the next question for you entrepreneurs out there, who can you align with, joint venture with and come together and offer something new into the mix? So you're going to create a win, win, win. So the first person is the end customer must win, you must win, and the JV or the partnership. I'm now reaching out to people in America and thinking about different ways that we can rise together and help enrich other people's lives through millionaires movement and come together and go to other thought leaders and other leaders in my space and go, well, we are not in opposition. We are together. The universe expands for each of our needs. There is always enough. And if you think that there's not enough or you think you're in too much competition, you're lost. You are dispensable. Okay, so who can you joint venture? with who can you align with a little bit like McDonald's aligns with toy makers so when you get a little happy meal there's a little toy in the food box brilliant brilliant understanding of what a true joint venture is everybody wins so what new product or service can you introduce to the customer to activate them now and into the future what can you um, bonus add and I'm not saying now is a time to slash your prices I don't like the idea of that I think it's a race to the bottom I don't think it's intelligent um, some people may agree with me some people may not that's totally cool I say to myself, how can I add massive value? How can I make a change or brighten somebody's day to the point where they go, wow, I am so happy to pay for the service. And I wasn't expecting this little add-on gift or this extra 20 minute um, shoulder massage or this little gift that didn't cost you much money, but you can add it on. I don't know, maybe if you're in the beauty industry, you might've had some samples from a, a you know pills and potions company or some some makeup or just something that you can add on or pop in that the customer wasn't expecting you know what can you do or say you know this time I'm going to give you a boat bring a friend along and I'm going to give you a bonus session together or if you're in the business of I don't know business coaching maybe instead of a one-hour session you could say look today I'm just going to give you two hours of my time 
You know, and if you're an employee and a contractor, I hope you're taking this on board. How can you step into making a massive impact into the business that you're associated with? And how can you inspire as a leader others to become more? Because you lead, you've got to ask yourself as an entrepreneur, am I guiding, am I leading, am I being this standout leader? And I say to myself, okay, I'm home more now, I've lost opportunities. And again, just like the GFC, when I lost, we lost a million dollars, we are losing money in this time. So I ask myself, how do I stay in control of my mind? And I say to myself, in this time, I am using it to upskill. And I would say this to every entrepreneur, think about this. Here are the areas that I focus on as an entrepreneur. Self-love comes first because without self-love, there's no self-worth and therefore no business. So self-love first, taking care of self, the temple my relationships with people, my health, okay? Then I think about serving other people, specialized knowledge. I know most of you watching this podcast, you're an entrepreneur. What are you learning right now? What are you studying? What are you upskilling in so that you can offer more services and more value to your people? What about if you became a speaker, got out there and did some seminars, maybe online or started a video blog or whatever, go to communities, even small communities and go, I'm here to give of my time to encourage people to shine brightly or to inform people or to teach people something that you're an expert at. People want to know what you know. Are you getting out there sharing this? Soulful selling. Most people shit themselves when we talk about selling. I don't know why because I believe if you come from a soul-based which is uh, a space of unconditional love, and you truly believe in your service, you truly believe in your product is enriching someone's life, then now is the time to upskill in this process. What do you need to overcome? What are your fears around that? We need to work that out right now while you're at home and the customers not might not be coming through your door. That is because they are reflecting you. If you're shit scared of sales, they're going to be repelled. So you need to embrace all this. Oh gosh, I'm going on a rampage now, aren't I? I better have a quick sip of my cup of tea. <laughs> Girls, give me a sign, a thumbs up, a love heart. Should I keep going? Because I've got a few more questions yet. I've got some questions for the contractors and also people who are employees. Shall I keep going? I need a little drink. I should have a bubbles. I need one. Mm. A little bit early for a bubbles. But, you know, this is very, very important. This could be a whole seminar in itself. Um, And so, as I said, beginning, in the beginning, the more empowered we become, the less desire we have for retraction, especially when it comes to business. And so the question, the final question is, I want you to ask yourself is, how can you prepare for the now and the future? None of us can foresee these things happening. You know, the GFC hit us. Now this virus is hitting us and it's going to go on. We're all in it together, but each of us have the choice to grow or retract and it's totally up to you you know there's victors and there's going to be victims and you know I stand on the fence of I am a leader I am a guiding example keep going keep innovating and keep shining the light that is what we are doing and the girls are saying keep going Okay, now I'm going to have some questions here. This is still perfect for entrepreneurs because most of you will have contractors, you may have employees, or if you're going to grow and expand your business, come together as a team and talk about this stuff. Don't brush it on the under the carpet, and it's not about them versus us. This is vitally important. We are together, and nobody is above or below in this. We stand together. That's how I see my team, my contractors, Contractors, my people who work with me, not necessarily for me, I see us as an aligned team. But if you're in that position, the first question I would ask myself, seeing my boss or the people I work for, doesn't matter what business you're in, they are going through a world of pain. So I'm looking from a different perspective now. How can I add massive value to the company that I am partnered with? I want you to notice that I said partnered with, not work for. 
That is such different mentality thinking. And if you are an employer, you're listening to this podcast and you've got a, a podcast and you're listening, you've got a job or you're a contractor, you've got to ask yourself, what is your languaging here? You are a partner, make no mistake about it. You need to be thinking not about just yourself, you need to be thinking about the people that you serve. How is it going to impact? How can you serve? You must see yourself as an integral partner in the business you are aligned with, even if you see yourself less than others. Because some people might say, well, Amanda, you know, I'm just a receptionist. You know, I would say if you're just a receptionist, you are probably one of the most important people in the whole business. I don't see anybody as just as anything. If you are in the role, you are important, you are integral, you are a vital source of this company staying alive and growing into the future. You're not just a receptionist. You are the first point of call. You've got to ask yourself, well, okay, I'm a receptionist. I'm the first port of call. How do I make people feel when they pick up the phone? Am I grumpy? Am I impatient? Am I making these people feel important, special and worthwhile? Oh my God, your receptionist people can crush your business or they can make your business. You know, this is where you need to shift our thinking or we need to shift our thinking. It is vitally important. Every role is critical. So, so many people putting in um thank you thank you thank you for all put it in your questions your comments i am going to get back to them i promise i can't see them all but the more involved we get this is you know can feel my energy rising because i really believe we're all in this together the thing is with a receptionist you front your company you are the company's face you are the company's energy and you represent everything that that company is so how can you elevate yourself and help The entrepreneur who is going through plenty of stresses right now, help them stay in business. Um, I would also ask, you know, if you're a contractor and employee in some way, how can you make an impact on the business that you are aligned with in a way that they would feel that you have to be the last to go. So let's make no bones about this. This is real. This is reality. There are millions, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people losing their jobs, losing contracts at the moment. If I was in that position right now, I would be saying to myself, Amanda, what can you learn right now? How can you be a standout leader so that you're the last to go? This is on you. It is not up to your employee or your, uh, you know, the entrepreneur of the business to feed you like a baby bird. I don't believe that anymore. I think that's really antiquated thinking. You as an employer, as a contractor, you need to become indispensable in your own right. So you say to yourself, how can I become unforgettable? How can I upskill in a measurable way so that I can show the people that I'm aligned with that I've helped their company grow by X amount? I've bought in this many more sales. So I'm going to talk about, for instance, a sales role. I know sales because I am, I was in sales, I've built sales teams, I've done sales trainings, I've written sales programs, which I'm going to be teaching inside Millionaires. But I would say, you know, if I was in a sales role right now and I could see my company going through this turmoil, I would say to myself, how can I upskill in these areas? understanding more about human behavior, understanding more about personal development, understanding more about relationships and the art of communicating in each other's values so that I can bring more income into the company. Wouldn't that make sense? So think about your role right now that you play in the company that you're aligned with and ask yourself, are you sitting home at night watching TV getting on the internet, looking at social media, or are you upskilling? If I, well, when I own a company, and I do own a company, the salespeople who work on themselves harder than anything else are the last people on this planet that I would let go. They are the lifeblood of the business. And anybody who spends time upskilling and becoming more empowered, they will, they will become indispensable because companies can't afford to let them go. The question I'd ask you is, you ask yourself is, geez, right now, could my company afford to let me go? And if you know internally the answer is yes, 
then what can you do right now to turn that around? How can you change that? How can you pivot and become so damn indispensable that they cannot let you go and they will find a way to hold on to you? I remember losing a million dollars. I know what it feels like. And the last people that I would ever imagine letting go in my company at that time were my sales team. Some went by the wayside because they were mentally weak. And I, and I don't say that in a rude and condescending way. I say it because they didn't take responsibility. However, there were plenty of people who did take responsibility, said, I will stay with you. I'm going to become more empowered and I'm going to learn new skills. Think about your business, ladies, all of you. Some of you are in the beauty industry. Some of you are in business coaching. Some of you are in all different types of businesses. Who are the people you're surrounding yourself with, your team members? Are they empowering themselves continually? Find out what the company's biggest frustrations are and ask yourself how you can solve more problems for them. You know, as a company leader, oh my God, it is so refreshing when a staff member or a contractor or somebody that you're aligned with says to me, Amanda, I can see you going through this really sticky point. I've got a couple of ideas for you. Some people, I mean, as an entrepreneur, I go, oh my God, thank you so much. I could really do with some help right now. I mean, I sat around my kitchen bench last weekend with two women in this community, Amanda and Melissa, and we sat there and we had a glass of bubbles and we workshopped each other's business. Even as entrepreneurs and standout leaders, which the three of us women are, we need each other. We need that support from each other. We lean in and we help each other. Shani, who's on this call, my sister who's on this call, we help each other grow. We're always checking in with each other. Hey, are you okay? Can I help you? Is there anything that I can help you get through so that we can keep moving forward? and serve more people. All of you entrepreneurs, ask yourself, who are you asking for help with? Who is in your mastermind? The mastermind is such a critical component right now because the mastermind, depending on which group you're in, is what's going to carry you through these times of turmoil. Not the outside world, but your inner circle. And, you know, we left that meeting after seven hours on Sunday. Yes, we'd had a few bubbles, I will admit, but we really left feeling uplifted. We were laughing. We will help each other, helping each other come up with such great ideas and celebrating the wins and going, how do we turn these challenges into opportunity? And so I would say for all of you uh, employees or contractors or whatever, whoever businesses you're aligned with, how can you make other people's day easier? Write these words down, easier, faster, smoother, less challenging, more fun and more graceful because we all want to move through this with ease and grace. I know Shani will love that word because of you, because you thought outside of your your immediate wants and your immediate self and said, how can I serve another person? Can you see how that you all elevate and grow together? And I say to the world out there at large, you know, it is time to drop the entitlement mentality. It's old. Um, if that is you, your job isn't safe anymore and you'll be the first to go. You will be the first to go if you have that entitlement mentality. I know not a single person on this podcast has that, by the way. Um, but ask yourself, you know, how can I move away from that and become so empowered in every area of my life that I shine my light, you shine your light so that they shine their light and together we keep elevating and enriching each other's lives and this time too shall pass. So ladies, that is the podcast for today. I have gone on one massive 45 minute rampage, but I truly felt that this was necessary. I know it's going to be hard hitting for many of you and you'll you'll feel that, you know, I've come across harsh. harsh. Some of you will go, thank God she said it. I was thinking about it. We just need someone to say it. But I've always said this podcast is raw. It's real. It's relatable. It is not a BS podcast. I do not fluff around the edges. This is your life. This is our lives. And none of us have got time to pretend and lie to each other. You know, we are standout leaders and this is what it's going to take. So I Cannot wait to hear your comments. I would love some feedback on this podcast. Ask me some questions and also 
the questions that I put forth to you. What are you going to do about them? Are you going to implement them? When you do, let me know the results. And, you know, what is going to happen as a result of this podcast today? You know, this is not about just going, well, thanks very much, love. I'll see you next week. This is about going away and doing something about it, you know in an uplifted way, an empowered way. And um, I want to say thank you, ladies. I really appreciate so many of you being on here and hopefully you found gold in this. So that is uh, our podcast today. That concludes today's How to Become Indispensable in Times of Economic Turmoil. Sending you big cyber hugs, many kisses. Love you all. Appreciate you being here and being inside this millionaires mastermind that is absolutely full of incredible standout leaders. Uh, I love each and every one of you. So much covered in today's podcast. I truly hope you took gold from what I shared with you and understand that success is an inside job. And even though we covered some very powerful and practical ways that you can become indispensable in your business and in your marketplace, now is the right time to become a standout leader and be a guiding light with those and for those that you absolutely love and that you want to serve. Till next week, I so appreciate you tuning into the G'day Gorgeous podcast that is dedicated to turning entrepreneurial women into a millionaire from the inside out and enriching lives for generations to come. You know that I'll be super grateful if you will please share this podcast with your family, friends and others, and especially in turmoil times like today with others that you know would greatly benefit and share these tactics and strategies and how to become more empowered. Lastly, to find out more about my millionaire mentoring for entrepreneurial women, my latest book and many inspirational stories, please visit us at g'daygorgeous.com or click the link in the notes below. And until next week, be bold, be courageous and be even more fabulous. Bye for now. Bye for now.